Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we made our way all the way up through Route 23, and we made it here to the gate to Victory Road. This time, we are going to be heading into Victory Road, but first things first, I have quite a bit of information to relay to all of you. First things first, in between episodes, I did quite a bit of level grinding. Charizard is now level 50, and everyone else on the team is level 45. In addition, I also went around the world and grabbed a few items that I felt were pretty important that I show off, so I'm going to put footage of that on screen now. Alright, first things first, there's a hidden item on Route 10. I believe it's a super potion. Honestly, it's pretty useless at this point. Let's see, where even is it? Is it behind this tree? I believe it requires cut. But yeah, it's a super potion, and it's pretty useless, so I honestly wouldn't recommend going out of your way to get this if you're as late in the game as I am, so I'm probably going to sell it off screen. Alright, second up, in the room in the Pokemon Mansion with the secret key, there is a hidden rare candy right here. I have no clue how I missed this, considering I had a list right in front of me when I recorded episode 53, I think it was. But yeah, definitely come back and get that if you missed it like I did. Alright, next up on Route 12 here, there's this item across the water that I never got. So we are going to be surfing right on across the water to grab TM-16, which contains Payday. Alright, finally, on the roof of the department store, I mentioned this girl before, but I figured I'd actually get the TMs here because A, one of them I actually want, and B, it's better to actually show something off than to just say something exists. So I'm going to give this girl a drink, I'm going to give her a fresh water. Yay, fresh water, thank you. And we get TM-13, which contains Ice Beam. It can freeze the target sometimes, very cool. If we give her Soda Pop, she will give us TM-48, which contains Rock Slide, which doesn't get an explanation for some reason. And then, if we give her a Lemonade, she will give us in return TM-49, which contains Try Attack, which also doesn't get an explanation for some reason. Rock Slide is exactly what it sounds like, and Try Attack is interesting because it's a normal type move, but it has, I believe, a 10% each of freezing, burning, and paralyzing, which I think is pretty neat. Now, real quick, I'd like to throw in a mention about something else in Celadon City that I might have gone over before. We have obtained every single TM we can possibly obtain at this point in the story, except for three. And these are not the desks. Move out of the way, guy. Thank you. This counter will trade you three TMs in exchange for coins. I don't think any of these are worth the time investment, but I figured I'd show that they're here. TM-15 contains Hyper Beam, TM-23 contains Dragon Rage, and TM-50 contains Substitute. Every single other TM that I have not mentioned or obtained in the series we will be getting in areas that we have yet to visit, so I just wanted to point this out. In addition to that, I have also captured quite a few Pokémon to bring our owned category, I guess we can call it, up to 50. In case you're curious, I caught Growlithe, Raticate, Muck, Grimer, and Ditto in the Pokemon Mansion, Tentacool on Route 20, Ponyta and Doduo on Route 17, and Oddish on Route 24. This allowed me to go back to the Professor Oak aids that we had not yet gotten rewards from, so I will put footage of that on screen now. Okay, first up on Route 11, if you have 30 Pokemon registered in your Pokedex, you can head into the second floor of the gatehouse and we can speak to Professor Oak's aide right here. If you caught 30 kinds of Pokemon, I'm supposed to give you an item finder. And since we have at least 30 kinds in our Pokedex, we have caught actually 50, of course. We obtain the item finder. Basically what this does, there are items on the ground that can't be seen. Item finder will detect an item close to you. It can't pinpoint it, so you have to look yourself. This item is pretty friggin' useless in Generation 1 because you cannot register items to the select button, which means every time you want to use this, you have to go into your menu, select it, and use it from there. 
So honestly, I'd recommend the cheaty way out and just use a guide like I've been doing. Alright, secondly, right over here on Route 15 by Fuchsia City, if you have 50 kinds of Pokémon in your Pokédex, you can head into this gatehouse and speak to Professor Oak's aide right here. If you caught 50 kinds of Pokémon, I'm supposed to give you an experience all. And since we have at least 50 kinds, we can get the experience all. This item gives experience points to all the Pokémon with you, even if they don't fight. It does, however, reduce the amount of experience for each Pokémon. If you don't need it, you should store it via PC. I really don't like this item. It's basically the experience share from generations 6 and 7, but a lot worse, because what it does is it takes the normal experience yield that you obtain and it splits it six ways over all of your Pokémon which means all of your Pokémon are going to grow extremely slowly, and every single time you knock out a Pokémon of any kind, it has to list out the amount of experience all six of them get. Which, as you might imagine, is not very good for videos because it extends battles by quite a bit. So I will not be making use of this item in the Let's Play. Finally, I have done quite a bit of retooling to our Pokémon Team move sets. So if we check Charizard right here, I've replaced Leer with Fire Blast. Fire Blast is very powerful, slightly inaccurate, and doesn't have very many power points, so I'm probably only going to be using this in a pinch, but that's honestly better than Leer, which I pretty much wasn't going to use at all. In terms of Lapras right here, I've replaced Confuse Ray with Psychic, which I didn't even know Lapras could learn until someone pointed it out in the comments, so I thank you very much for that. So this will give us quite a bit of coverage on Pokémon that are weak to Psychic, which when it comes to this game is a lot. I have also replaced Body Slam with Blizzard. Some people might be a little confused by this, they're like, wait, but Blizzard's only 70% accurate. Not in this game, in this game it's 90% accurate. So I figured it would be good to have a little bit of coverage in that regard, and Body Slam we don't get Stab for, but Blizzard we do, so I figured it was a good trade-off. For Nidoking right here, I have replaced Horn Attack with Earthquake. This is a Stab Ground type move for Nidoking, very powerful, very accurate, and I really wanted to have it on there. I was thinking about replacing Double Kick with a more powerful fighting type move, but the issue with that is, the other fighting type moves aren't very good. The only other fighting type moves that Nidoking can learn are Counter, which doesn't actually make a difference in terms of typing, and Submission, I believe it is, which will deal damage equal to Nidoking's level. It might be Submission, it might be a uh, Seismic Toss, I don't remember which one it is, but either way, it deals damage based on level, and considering Nidoking is probably only going to be in the low 50s by the end of the game, I figured it wasn't worth it, so we're keeping Double Kick. For Venusaur, I've replaced Poison Powder with Toxic. Toxic inflicts badly poison status, which is very, very good in this game when used in conjunction with Leech Seed because Toxic and Leech Seed will actually use Toxic's damage counter. So if Toxic does a sixteenth of damage, Leech Seed will proceed to do two sixteenths, and then the next turn Toxic will do three sixteenths and Leech Seed will do four sixteenths. And it's kind of broken. Unfortunately, as far as I know, Leech Seed's recovery does not scale in the same way. I also replaced Vine Whip with Solar Beam, Solar Beam is a two-turn attack that charges on one turn and executes the next, but honestly, it's probably going to be better than Vine Whip in pretty much any case, so I decided to go with it. For Blastoise, I've replaced Withdraw with Ice Beam, like I believe I mentioned I was going to in some previous episodes, because Ice Beam is just really good, and it's nice to have another Ice-type user aside from Lapras, Plus, I was probably never going to use Withdraw anyway. I also learned Skull Bash at level 42. I don't remember exactly what was in that slot beforehand, but yeah, when I got to level 42, I tried to learn Skull Bash. Also worth noting, Venusaur tried to learn Growth at level 43, but as you saw, I opted not to go for it. Anyway, also in Blastoise, I replaced Bite with Strength. 
Bite has a slight chance of inflicting a flinch, but it's not very powerful, and it's a normal type move in this game, so I figured there really wasn't any big deal in replacing it with strength. And finally, on Pikachu right here, I replaced Slam with Body Slam, which is a slight chance of paralyzing, and is also quite powerful. There was someone who suggested teaching it Mega Kick in the comments, which is not a terrible idea, to be honest, but the problem is, even though it's extremely powerful, it only hits three out of four times. And since Pikachu tends to be pretty frail, I was a little concerned that I would be in a critical situation, miss, and then take some serious damage. I also still have Thunder Wave on Pikachu. I am planning on replacing this, just not yet. I have a reason for keeping it there. Okay, I think that that's everything. One last thing I want to mention is I resorted our item inventory a little bit, so this is what we are looking like right now. I sold off our escape ropes and all of our Pokeballs except the Master Ball because I'm not going to be needing them for the immediate future. And one thing that's really interesting, I also sold off all of our Moonstones because we don't need them for anything. But the funny thing is, you can and are allowed to sell Moonstones to the Pokemart in this game for zero money. So I literally just gave them away, but honestly, I wasn't going to use them anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So yeah, as you can see, our playtime is a little bit higher as of right now, and our money is a little bit lower. So that's what we're going to be going with. Now, I know we're like 10 to 11 minutes into this video at this point, just because we've been going over all of this stuff. But I figured it was all really, really important to go over. So we're probably going to have a slightly longer episode today just because we've spent the first half this video, like, bookkeeping, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I put up a rappel before starting the recording, so let's head right on in to Victory Road that has really, really good music in gold and silver, but here, really not that great of a tune. Anyway, as you can see, the main gimmick in Victory Road right here is there are these buttons, and what you need to do is you need to use strength to push these boulders onto said buttons. Now, that of course means you need to bring somebody with strength, so be sure not to forget this, because you do not want to walk all the way back because you do not have strength with you. Anyway, we want to push this boulder over this way, and up, and right on over this way to the first switch. I believe there are only four of these switches in the entire dungeon, so if this seems a little bit tedious, I do agree it is tedious, but there really aren't too terribly many like you might remember. Anyway, we put the boulder onto that button, and this little barrier that used to be right up here is now gone, and we can go right on through. And if we loop around this way, we have an interesting little gimmick right here. There are two items over here. Unfortunately, on each visit to the cave, you can only grab one. The first one I am going to grab is this guy, and we get TM-43, which contains Sky Attack. Now I am going to actually leave the cave and come back to reset this boulder, and then we'll be able to get the other item. Alrighty, we are back and the boulder has been reset, so now we can push it this way, and then push it that way, and we can grab this item, which is a rare candy, which, as you might imagine, I really, really want to grab, because rare candies are a very valuable commodity in this game. Anyway, heading right over here, we have our first instance of a trainer. I wonder if you are good enough for me. There are, I believe, 11 trainers in this iteration of Victory Road, and I do plan on fighting them all because I want that sweet, sweet experience. And I probably shouldn't have Charizard in the front here just because it's obviously our highest level team member, and I think the others are probably more deserving of the experience. So after this fight, we're probably going to be switching Charizard out of the front. Alright, we have Nine Tails coming in, so I think we are going to switch in Blastoise to deal this thing a Surf. Okay. So we're going to use Surf right here, and that should take it down pretty quickly. Hopefully. Grinding these Pokémon 
up to these levels actually took quite a while. In case anyone's curious, the place I chose to grind was actually the basement of the Pokemon Mansion, because Pokemon up to level 46 can show up down there. And as a result, they are a pretty, pretty good place to grind before Victory Road. Anyway, right here, there is a boulder that really only serves as a shortcut back to the entrance and no other purpose whatsoever. I can see you're good. Let me see exactly how good. I forgot to switch Charizard out because I am smart. Alright. And we have a cool trainer here. He's got four Pokemon. That's actually kind of impressive. And he's got an Ivysaur, which is not even fully evolved. Not sure what the rationale behind this decision was. But I mean, I guess we can go with it. Anyway, up next is a War Turtle. I think I am sensing a pattern here, so I'm going to send in Pikachu, which I don't think has really gotten a whole lot of use recently. That's kind of the issue with having Pikachu as a starter in this game. It's honestly, all things considered, not the greatest Pokemon in the world, and Raichu is objectively better when it comes to stats and things. So... People that tend to use Pikachu all the way through this game usually wind up having a Pokemon that's not quite up to par with the rest of the team. So honestly, if I had to name a weakest member of the team at the moment, it would probably be Pikachu. And that's a bit of a flaw with this game in my opinion. But I mean, if you use Pikachu right, it can definitely deal out some serious damage. Its issue is taking hits, because there can be times where you're going to have some real problems trying to keep it conscious against certain other opponents, and wow, Ember? Really? Okay. Alrighty, anyway, this person's got good taste because they have the fully evolved Charizard on their team. Down it goes, probably gonna get a lot of experience for that. Ooh, yes. Alright. Now, my plan for levels going into the final battles of the game, I've been talking with a couple of friends who have actually more experience with this game than I do, and what I've been hearing generally is that I should probably want Pokemon in the low to mid 50s if I don't want to have a hard time in the final battles of the game. This is a little bit higher than I would have actually expected. So if anyone else has an opinion on the matter, please feel free to give it. Anyway, right here, since we transition floors, we have to use strength again, which is a little annoying. And push the rock over here. Got a little bit of lag here, actually. That's kind of interesting. Guess there's a lot of entities on this floor. Anyway, push that rock onto the button, and this little barrier is now open, and we can go over and fight this guy. Victory Road is the final test for trainers. Alright. Now, ideally, I would like to get Victory Road done in two parts, and honestly, I think that's pretty doable, because we're already on trainer number three in the area out of 11, and we've actually only been in the area for about seven minutes, so I think we're probably in a pretty good position. Anyway, gonna use our super trippy looking psychic attack. And there we go. And next up is another Pokemon that falls quickly to psychic, so we're just gonna lay on the psychics. Like, we've got a lot of really powerful moves on the team now, so I'm really not too terribly concerned about getting through this area. But yeah, that's the reason I'm thinking. Wow, voice crack. That's the reason I'm thinking flat 50s maybe for the final battles of the game because we've got quite a few very very strong attacks on our team right now so if anyone has some input feel free to give it because we're probably not actually going to be doing the final battles of the game until next week unless i just get really really into it and just decide to do them immediately without viewer input which is entirely possible Anyway, Lapras is trying to learn a Hydro Pump right here. That is a very powerful Water-type move, but it's kind of inaccurate, and since we already have Surf as a Water-type move that we can't get rid of, I think we're going to skip this one and keep what we've got. Ay-ya, he says, of course. 
All right, we are going to head into our Pokemon, and I think we're going to switch Lapras out of the front because it is currently level 46, and other members are level 45. So we're going to put up Blastoise and see what he can do. Anyway, you see that right up there? We're going to be dealing with that later. I promise you. Anyway, coming right on over this way, we have TM05, which of course contains Mega Kick. Very nice. And right over here, looks like we have another trainer. So let's fight him too. Ah, so you wish to challenge the Elite Four? Yeah, I do want to challenge the Elite Four. I mean, that's kind of how endgame works in these kinds of things. Anyway, up comes Drowsy, which is a psychic type, which means we have pretty much nothing to do against this thing in terms of super effectiveness. So I think just using our stab moves would be good. And in case someone watching doesn't know what stab means, it's basically, it's a, it's an acronym for same type attack bonus, which is a mechanic in the game where if a Pokemon uses a move of the same type as the Pokemon itself, it gets an additional multiplier added onto it, and it therefore does more damage, which is really, really good. So if you have a water type, you want to use water moves with it, because those water moves would be more powerful than if, say, a normal type used them. Anyway, got a Hypno right here, which is an interesting species of Pokémon, to say the least. Anyone who's played to the end of Pokémon Fire Red and Leaf Green knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. And down goes... Hypno. Very good. Alright, next up is Kadabra. I think Blastoise can just plow through this guy, to be honest, because we out-level him a little bit. I have a feeling if I hadn't grinded before this dungeon, we would have had a bit of trouble, because there were some Pokémon that we just had at 40 back then, at the end of last episode. So, if anyone wants to compare the team, I did show the entire team at the end of the last video before I did all of this training. So yeah, I think there's a pretty big improvement across the board here, although it is frustrating that I did have to bite the bullet and grind, especially for so long, and we're probably going to have to grind even more before the end of the game. That's a big issue with a lot of these older Pokemon games, and I feel like it didn't really stop becoming an issue until like Generation 3 or 4. Which is kind of frustrating, and the one thing is, I don't get why people hate the experience share in Generation 6 and 7 so much. Because it, it eliminates grinding, and it's really, really helpful. And it's also really helpful for people like me who are trying to complete the Pokedex. So they need to basically plow through the other version as fast as possible to get all the exclusives that they can't get elsewhere, like Legendaries. So, like, I was able to plow through Alpha Sapphire in, like, four days with, like, some- with pretty casual amounts of play just because I didn't have to grind, and I honestly think that's a good thing, so... I'm in favor of the new experience share, I'll just say that much. Anyway, Repel's effect wears off, because of course it did. And we'll use another one. And I think we got another trainer right here, which will probably be the last trainer we fight in this episode, because my recording right now is at 20 minutes plus the 5 minutes of other footage I showed at the start of the video. So this one's probably going to wind up being kind of long. And honestly, at this point, I've got pretty much the entire remainder of the Let's Play outlined, so I think going from there, it's quite likely that regardless of how long an episode is going to wind up, I'm going to approach an episode with a goal in mind to complete. And if that goal happens to take longer than 20-ish minutes, I'm probably just going to extend the episode. Please don't flinch. Yes. All right. I'm going to use Surf right here, and that should bring down that Persian. Very good. Get a lot of experience for that, and up next is Golduck, so I think we are going to switch over to Pikachu to take down this one. Now, Golduck is a Pokemon that I really, really like, but I've never actually used on a team before, I don't think, which is kind of interesting. I don't know, maybe I'm just more biased towards Water-type starters, and therefore I don't get to pick Golduck as much? Because honestly, I can name... At this point, probably two generations where the water-type starter is my favorite. 
So yeah, kind of unfortunate. Also, some people still think that Golduck is part psychic type. It is not. It can use psychic moves, but it is not a psychic type. So wanted to clear that up real quick. All right, let's switch Blastoise out of the front since it's got a level up and we're switching Nidoking into the front. And right here, we have a full heal, which is definitely a very good item to grab. And I think that's actually where we're going to stop for this episode. So, this past episode of Pokemon Yellow, I discussed a lot of changes to the team in between episodes, and we also got started here on Victory Road. And next time on Pokemon Yellow, it is my full intention to complete Victory Road and make our way to the Pokemon League. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Metamon, Henshin Pokemon, Takasa, 0.3 meter, Omosa, 4.0 kg, Karada no Saibo no Tsukiri o Jibun de Kumikaete, Hoka no Seimei Tai ni Henshin Suru.